Can we talk to Chris Laurie now? Yeah, let's talk to Chris Laurie. Because Chris Laurie yeah, is a bobsleigh <laughs> legend, and the Olympics are coming up. And when was the last time you were in the sled? Like, uh, like in a competition. I know you, you've actually gone down the Vancouver course. Yes, I have. The Whistler yeah. course, I should say. Well, let's go through your past accomplishments. You were in the Olympics in uh, 88, 92, 96, and 98. Uh, yeah, roughly. 94, okay. 98. Oh, 94. <laughs> they kind yeah, of 92, did. 92, 94. They, and that's when they oh, okay, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> you coached the U.S. team, the U.S. Uh, men's team? Uh, yeah, I worked with one of the athletes in particular on the U.S. team for the 2002 games. Uh, just sort of at arm's length for a while and then quite kind of holding his hand through the Olympic Games. And uh, What am I looking at here? This is this is you. That's a crash. This is a crash. This is you oh, in on the this sled. this is you? This is nasty. Where was that's, this? Uh, that was Trevenia, Italy, 1987, one year before my first Olympic Games. Uh, that track was the gnarliest track in the world. And we would do up to just over 140 kilometers an hour on that track. Wow. And um, that, that crash should have killed me, actually, um, or left me at what, least, can, at least a quadriplegic. Can we see that again? Can you take us through this one more time? You bet. Because this sort of came up suddenly. And I want to see if we can get this one more time. And so the sled will go over in the corner. You'll see my head um, make contact with the wall. At that point, we're traveling right. over 135 kilometers just, an hour. How, what, what constitute? what happens when there's, there's a crash? Like, you just get out of the grooves, or what happens? Well, what happens is you're in the corner, and oh, um, you're in the corner, and I didn't steer off soon enough, and then oh, there my head hits the wall, Yikes. and I'm, you'll see me laying outside the sled unconscious, and then the sled rolls over on top of me, and that then didn't look slides like a bad the, uh, hit on the head, but it actually knocked you unconscious. The 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 initial hit against the wall. Yeah. I'm doing about 135, and so my head had snapped back, and it had knocked me unconscious. So then I was being pulled out of the sled as the uh, sled moved down the long straightaway. And that finished corner, this last corner here, is about 30 feet high. And the sled would plow through the lip there and then... Uh, that sled looked like over. it was trying to climb out of the, it did. the track. Yeah, it was actually tearing out a portion of the lip. Back in those days, that's a natural track uh, built straight in the mountainside. And at that time, they just put two by sixes uh, to keep the sled inside the, the track. And so, as a result... Uh, what do you prefer, a natural track or the man-made tracks? The natural tracks were very fast, yeah. and there's only one left in the world, that's in St. Moritz, and there the sled goes about 148 kilometers an hour. So how fast are the sleds going at Whistler? They're doing over 150 kilometers an hour, it's but, the fastest track in the world. But now you're not happy that they've actually softened that track up, right? Well, what happened was, is particularly in the foreman, because the foreman is longer and it goes faster, there is a corner combination near the bottom, corner 13. They now call it the 50-50 corner yeah. because the sleds are going so fast in a competitive environment that there's a 50% chance you make it through. But the drivers have to be so precise in their driving at that point that if they're off by even six or eight inches, then the sled can go in the corner too late and uh, it puts the sled over. And at that, at, the, at that corner 13, you're doing about 145 to 148 kilometers an hour. So... It's the fastest point on any track in the world where you can go over. But when they built the track, didn't some of the guys around the world complain, oh, this is too, too freaky? Yeah. Make it a bit easier? What's happened with the sport over the years is that they keep on bringing in some safety precautions. And um, some of the tracks have been what we call pretty soft. And this track, they've done a, a nice job. It's a nice touch of... Uh, high speed, the fastest track in the world. Yeah. So you're in corners a lot. And at the bottom of the track, it opens up quite a bit, which allows the sled to start to pick up speed. But that one specific area, you have to be quite precise. So the Europeans came in, and what happens is, is a part of the sport is the danger of the sport. And the psychological profile required by the athletes, when they know there's, there's potential for danger, potential for physical harm, the psychology and the competitiveness, it's going to draw out tougher competitors and put away the weaker, the weaker competitors. And so we need that in, in the sport. It has to be just the right balance. And so when a crewman is standing at the top of the run uh, and they're thinking, well, I need to have faith and trust in my driver, then they, if they're slightly fearful, they'll They'll hold back a little bit, and that can affect their overall uh, performance. And you believe this despite the video we saw from Despite years the fact ago. you nearly died on the bobsleigh. Yeah, well, that track, when we went back to that track two years later, we were in a position to win the overall World Cup. And so 
naturally I had to go through that process in my own mind yeah. to sp- focus specifically on the task. But my, think of my crewman. Think about last time Chris drove down this track. He had left his blood and half his body on this track. Actually, that's when we set the track record, that picture there. We had set the track record on the Trevinia track uh, after um, two years after my crash, which put us in a position to win the overall World Cup. And wow. uh, that sled right there, the one we just saw, that sled's about 20 feet high in the corner, pulling about 5 Gs. Wow. Wow. Now, isn't the whole idea, though, behind bobsleigh, that's why it's so popular. That's why people love it, because there is an element of danger. Yes. I mean, if if I could do the bobsleigh, nobody would watch it, because I would only do it <laughs> well, if I was so absolutely sure. safe. The uh, We're going to see some action in Worcester this year. Yeah. Because especially, like I say, especially in the four-man, because it's longer, faster. Uh, but the two-man sleds are also having some difficulty in that corner. The luge and the skeleton, they're, they're small enough an object that they can work their way through that, that corner combination. But it's the bobsleigh. Easily, but the bobsleds have a bit of a tougher time. And when you go over in a bobsled and your head is exposed and it's, uh, you really, there's a lot of, you get a lot of, Friction burns, where your skin is burned right down to the bone, and Ooh. separated shoulders, uh, necks of guy. So it's, fraction it's, it's is not like bone. driving a, a race car where you have a hands-free device and all these straps and no. stuff. You're a little more out there. <laughs> We're just talking about you know metal and carbon fiber and, and a human being in there. And <laughs> <laughs> get, how, how, how do you think Canadians are going to do in the bobsleigh? Yeah, we have a good team. Yeah, we uh, we've got a new medal chances in both men's and women's in bobsleigh, and we've got. Uh, few competitive teams so we're looking we're looking forward to it it's going to be interesting because the four-man could be a survival of the fittest do you think we're going to see some crashes well during the international training which took place in november all of the top drivers went over there Uh, andre longa who has not crashed in decades went over uh world cup champion went over last year's world cup champion went over. Um, Pierre Luders has gone over on that track more times than he has on any other track. Wow. And so it's going to be some action. All right. Thanks for coming by. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you. Take care. Thank you. And you're going to be there watching it. I'm actually broadcasting. Yeah, for TGP. Yeah, working from other stations. For someone else. Other stations. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thanks very much. All right. Let's start at the intermission.